with the drafting of Victor Wambayama last night, the fleece is complete. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. What is up San Antonio Spurs fans? Welcome to TSR Sports. And what prompted this video is a few days ago I was thinking, man, you know, some of the trades the Spurs pulled off have looked much better now than they did originally. Originally, I thought they were competing. Maybe they were secretly just kind of doing a rebuild. The tank last year, it was a tank, was perfect. Yeah, we had some luck in the number one overall pick. Essentially, Spurs has Brian Wright essentially pulled off a master class of a rebuild the last few years, unbeknownst to us, who a lot of us openly criticized what the Spurs were doing. And now here we are with a possible dynasty on the horizon. While in the meantime, fleecing uh, some of the other teams in the NBA, this uh, article is by Air Alamo that I found uh, last night, kind of prompted me to go, you know what, I've been thinking about this, they wrote an article about it, let's talk about it today, drop a comment down below, do you think the Spurs have fleeced the NBA with what they've done the last few year, four years and, and taking this quick rebuild and just spinning it on its head, granted again, luck involved, let me know, hit the thumbs up to the channel and subscribe for more Spurs content, let's get into the article, let's get into the meat of the story. Brian Wright was originally criticized initially by some Spurs fans, myself included, says the writer, me as well, for questionable decisions early on in his tenor. Fortunately, has turned things around in a big way thanks to several smart moves that have panned out far better than initially expected. I would agree. We start off with the DeMar DeRozan trade. He was traded for lightly protected 2025 first round picks, which with the Bulls appearing ready to rebuild, means it could potentially be another lottery pick as well as Thaddeus Young and two second round picks. Young and the Lakers' second-round pick were trading a deal for Toronto's first-round pick a few months later, which became Malachi Branham, who has shown us a lot of promise off the bench. Jakob Pertl, who we got from the Raptors, was traded back to the Raptors for a top-six protected first-round pick in two seconds. And now he may not even re-sign with the Raptors, according to NBA insider Jonathan Feigen. So we may have gotten a first-round pick for a player that was a very short rental for the Raptors. And there's a lot of question marks on the Raptors right now if they're going to be going into rebuild mode. The Derek White trade. We cried a first, which became Blake Wesley. Jury's out on him. A 2025 first-round pick swap, which eh, might not really be much there. Josh Richardson and Romeo Langford. Both Langford and Richardson play well for the Spurs, and Richardson was later traded for four seconds, while the pick swap could come in handy. Eh, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Then there's the DeJounte Murray trade Spurs fans. We talked about this in death, where the Spurs, uh, where, which has made the Spurs bad enough to land the number one pick but also received two unprotected first-round picks, plus Charlotte's first. So that's from a previous trade, is it not? And, da, 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 da. and then we have another pick swap with the Hawks as well. The, pick, pick Hawks are, the Hawks picks are huge because the Hawks, who knows? Ashanti Murray might not resign with them. There's a Trey Young stuff. Two unprotected picks from them, plus a pick swap. Those can be more lottery picks in the future. And if the Spurs are winning in a playoff team, and a title contender, maybe a title winner in the next three to four years, and we're still getting lottery picks, this would be an absolute master class. I pop in the front office. And now we close this up with that's a huge haul for, they say actually, I forgot to mention, a huge haul for player that might not resign with Atlanta next season. Trades like that are most of the reason the Spurs are in the position they are right now, along with some lottery luck that helped them land the number one pick. And yes, I know getting Wemby number one overall was sheer luck. It could have went the opposite direction, but when I look at the moves the Spurs have made, and I haven't liked all the draft picks, Lucas Salmonich, Joshua Primo, those were duds for very different reasons. But the way we've kind of just immediately flipped the switch and gone rebuild, and just all the picks they've gotten, and the way they're actually, at first, I didn't like it, but moving players and getting capital for them, like Jakob Pertl and Jean-Pierre Murray that weren't going to resign with this long term, I really like the Spurs front office is done. Do I feel like they really fleeced the NBA? No. But teams are going to hate the Spurs. NBA fans that are not Spurs fans are going to hate the Spurs when this team is a playoff team and may possibly still be getting lottery picks. And oh my gosh, can you imagine if the Hawks are bad enough that they're a lottery team in 25 or 26 or 27, get the first round pick, and then that's going to our San Antonio Spurs. That would be absolutely bonkers. That's all I got. A uh, short video today. Hope you're having a great weekend. TGIF, thank you for tuning in. And as always... You're from New Jersey, you don't have to be aware. Go Spurs, go.